Hi guys, so let's see how we can solve this question under simple harmonic motion. We have two particles that execute simple harmonic motion and then uh, we've been told that they have the same amplitude and frequency almost along the same straight line. Then they pass one another when going in opposite directions and then each time their displacement is half their amplitude. The question is, what is the phase difference between them? Meaning that we'll need to create two equations for these two particles and then see how we can relate the two and find the difference in their phase difference. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this problem. Okay, so let's see how we can break it down. We have two particles. We have particle one and the particle two. So we're going to give them the formula for the initial for symphonic motion. This one we're going to give it a psi omega t, or this one we shall give it a psi omega t plus phi. Now the reason why this one does not have phi because here well, it's obvious that we're finding a diff the difference between the two. So if here we have it as a zero, then we're just going to calculate for this phi that we have here, then that is uh, the difference that we're looking for. Okay. So from there now, it's important to note that, remember, we told that the displacement, when the displacement is half the amplitude, that is when they pass each other. So when the displacement for both is half the amplitude, this is when they, they pass each other. So I'm just going to uh, compare these two equations such that for the first one, here where there's y1, we shall replace it with a over 2 is equals to a sine omega t. Then same thing here as well, we're going to replace uh, this y2 with this, so that we have a over 2 is equals to a sine omega t plus the phase angle, like that. Then, if we divide both sides by a, the a will cancel, leaving us with half being equals to sine omega t. Same thing here, divide both sides by a, leaving us with half is equals to sine omega t plus the phase angle. Then now, we're going to bring in an identity from trigonometry, which is uh, the sine, the, the sum difference identity. So the sum difference identity goes like this for sine. Since we have sine a plus b, for example, this will give us the sine of a cos of b, then we have plus minus or plus or minus cos of a sine of b. Now our main focus firstly is on this equation that we have here, meaning that if you have two angles that are adding or subtracting, we can just use this particular identity. So since we have a sine and we have these two angles adding, meaning that our a is omega t and our b is the phase shift. So let's do the substitutions. We still have our half there. So we shall replace this whole part, which is just uh, equivalent to that with the half. So that we have half is equals to sine. Now remember A, which is our first angle, is omega t. And then cos, this cos that we have here. B is our second angle, which is the phase shift. Plus, since we're using a plus there, we're using a plus there as well. First angle again is omega t, and then lastly we have sine, b is the second angle which is the phase shift. So now at this stage, since here we already have the phase shift and here we have the phase shift, then these two want to change. But what we'd like to change is this part that we have here. Since for this part, the sine omega t we are going to replace it with uh, this equation that we have here. So meaning that here where the sine omega t, we're just going to replace it with half. But for this part, we're going to say, uh, from mathematics again, we know that sine square omega t plus cos square omega t is equals to 1. So this is uh, one of the Pythagorean identities. So now we're going to make uh, this the subject of the formula, which is cos square omega t is equals to 1 minus the sine square 
omega q. Now, since we want to replace this guy here, we're going to introduce a root to both sides so that we have the same exact thing that we want to do the replacing with. Meaning that if we introduce a root to both sides, this gives us both omega t is equals to the square root of 1 minus sine square omega t. Okay, so now let's go ahead with the substitutions. So this expression that we have here, which is half, is equals to sine omega t, like that. Then we have this part, which is cos phi plus, here we have cos omega t, which is this expression that we have here now. So I'm going to replace this with the square root of 1 minus sine square omega t that and remember the last part there which is a sine sine phi like that okay so now from there this is what we're going to do um, we have our half as it is remember sine omega t is half so here where the sine omega t we're going to replace it with a half cos phi plus in the square root there we're going to say the square root of one minus open bracket sine square omega t this one the square the square should go outside now sine phi so i've just pushed the square outside so that you can see that whatever we have here is just the same as uh, this part here hence we replace it with half as well so half is equals to half cos phi plus the square root of one minus half in brackets squared sine phi the whole reason why we're doing this is because we only want to remain with phi that's our angle of interest so let's continue with it half is equals to half cos phi plus so uh here we're going to have the root of one minus one over four uh sine So we we'll get half, half cos phi. If we subtract these two, we simply get uh, three over four. Everything is still under the root sine phi, like that. Then the next thing I'm going to do is um, we're going to have half is equals to half sine. Sorry, it's supposed to be a cos. Is a cos. So just continue from there. Plus, this is as good as the root of 3 over 2. The root of 3, the root of 4 is 2. Sine phi. So at this stage now, we can just say let's multiply it throughout by 2. So what do we remain with? Here we remain with 1, which is equals to here it's just uh, 1 times cos, here it's just, just the cos phi. Plus, if the 2 cancels with that 2, we just remain with root 3. Sine so now at this stage, our job is just to calculate the value of phi and that becomes the difference uh, in the phase shift. So let's go ahead and compute that. So here's where we are. We have 1 is equal to cos phi plus root 3 sine phi. How do we proceed from here? What we're going to do is we're going to push this to the other side. So that we have 1 minus And this is equals to root 3 sine phi, like this. So after doing that, we're just going to square both sides. So if we square both sides, like this, left hand side, we have 1 minus cos phi. 1 minus cos phi is equals to the square root and the square will just give us 3. Then the sine will have sine square phi. Then what we can do here is we can try to expand this. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times cos is negative cos. Cos times 1 is negative cos like that. Then negative cos, negative cos will get a positive cos square phi. Everything is equal to 3 sine square phi. Okay, so now we're going to say 1 minus, we put these two together, Hence we get 2 cos phi 
plus cos square pi is equal to 3 sine square pi. So at this stage, what we want is just to have one trig uh, ratio. If we're going to get rid of the sine, we know that sine square pi plus cos square pi is equal to 1. So sine square pi is equal to 1 minus cos square pi. So we're going to replace this sign here with whatever we've obtained here. Just to the substitutions, we'll have 1 minus 2 cos pi plus cos square pi is equal to 3. Here where the sine square, we're going to replace it with 1 minus 4 square pi. So now we just have expressions for cos. So let's group everything together and uh, solve the quadratic equation. So what we have is 1 minus 2 cos pi plus cos square pi is equal to 3. So 3 times 1, 3 times cos, we'll have 3 cos square pi. Let's put everything on one side. So we're going to have this, which is a cos square, this positive, 3 cos square pi, and then we have this cos here, 2 cos pi. Now remember, we have the 1 and we have the 3. So if the 3 crosses the cosine to become a minus 3, so 1 minus that 3 will get a minus 2. Remember, everything is equal to 0. And then from there now, let's just put these two together. Hence, we have 4 cos square pi minus 2 cos pi minus 2 is equal to 0. So we have a quadratic equation here that we're supposed to solve, and uh, once we find the value of pi, then that is our answer. So to solve this quadratic equation, we can relate it to, to any letter of interest. So let's say, let's relate it to x. So let, let x be cos pi. So here where there's cos pi, we're replacing it with x. Hence what we get will be 4, x squared minus 2 x minus 2 is equal to 0. We divide throughout by 2, hence we're going to get 2x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. So let's solve this quadratic equation. What we're going to get will be um, using factorization, our product will be negative 2, our sum will be negative 1. So those two numbers will be negative 2 and positive 1. Because if we multiply them, we get negative 2. If we add them, we get uh, negative 1. So 2x squared minus 2x plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. We factor out what's common. So 2x, x minus 1. Here we factor out 1. And with x minus 1. So everything is equal to 0. So 2x plus 1, x minus 1, everything is equal to 0. So the first value of x will be equal to negative half, and the other value of x will be equal to 1. So we're not looking for x, we're looking for cos theta, remember? So here where there's x, we replace it with cos theta. Let's start with the 1. Cos, not theta, but pi. So cos pi is equal to 1. So pi is equal to the cos inverse of 1, and hence the cos inverse of 1, we simply get 0, 0 degrees. Now, this is not valid, so we can say not valid. Why? Uh, this is not valid simply because we're looking for the difference between the two angles, but if we get a 0, simply meaning that there's no difference between the two, or that the difference is 0. So we will not consider this to be valid. The next part, Remember, the value of x is negative half. So here where there's x, we shall put cos pi is equal to negative half. Same procedure, pi is equal to the cos inverse of negative 0 0.5. Hence, pi is equal to 120 degrees. So the difference in phase angle is simply 120 degrees. So this is how we obtain this value.
hope that was helpful. In case you have a question, please feel free to drop it in the comments. Thank you very much.